Hi and welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a 50-year-old journalist with an interest in ageing well and sharing information on how to look and feel good for longer. And a few months ago, I was sent a little tester by a South African skincare company called Optoderm of an anti-ageing skin cream that contained an ingredient called Methylene Blue. Now, having heard a little about Methylene Blue from other skincare channels, I started to use it and I was actually quite taken with what appeared to be its calming and balancing effects on my skin. It's a very gentle but potentially quite powerful ingredient. So I started to look at methylene blue options that were more readily available closer to home. And there are very few companies out there selling skincare with methylene blue in it at the moment. It's really an emerging skincare ingredient. But one US-based company called Blue Lean specializes in it. I ordered their night cream from Amazon. It cost me $44 and I paid $62 in total once tax and shipping to the UK were added. Methylene blue is essentially a chemical antioxidant it's also commonly used as a dye and it's being used to treat a variety of health conditions including a rare blood disorder but it's also thought to protect the skin from oxidative stress and with the potential to thicken the skin as well and there is credible research which we'll hear about shortly to support those claims. To find out exactly how it works I spoke to scientist and Blue Lean founder Dr Kan Tsao who now brings us this fascinating insight into how she discovered the anti-aging potential of methylene blue on our skin and what it could do for us and if after watching or listening to this interview you want to find out more I'll link to some of the research mentioned in the description where I'll also add a link to the Blue Lean site with discount code as well as a link to the Optoderm product I mentioned at the start of the video. So now, let's hear about the power of blue. Dr. Tao, welcome to the channel. Where are you joining me from today? I'm joining you from uh, Maryland, the United States. I many, many moons ago when I was 20, worked a summer in Maryland at Ocean City. Yeah, there is a boardwalk and a lot of fun shops around it and the restaurants. That's where I worked, on the boardwalk. I would love to start just by hearing about your, your own background and what led you to discover methylene blue as an anti-aging treatment because you were investigating it originally for an entirely different purpose, weren't you? I started as a professor at the University of Maryland in 2010, uh, right after I was trained by Dr. Francis Collins at National Institutes of Health as a postdoctoral fellow for five years. So my research at that time was focusing on to find a treatment for a rare genetic disease of accelerated aging, which is called progeria. Have you heard about progeria? Those patients, they are talented. They are young, but they unfortunately experience age-related symptoms at very early on life in their teens, that, uh -huh. and they pass away earlier too. So I was focusing on to looking into FDA-approved phase three type of drugs to help progeria patients because it's a very rare disease. So we have about 200 maybe worldwide. The stuff we have commonly is a skin biopsy from the patients. So we are testing the, the, the different drugs on their skin cells. So what we do is we always have control cells like not for normal people, healthy individuals as a control just to check what's happening, right, side by side. I used the skin cells from age-matched young people, also from elderly people because they experience accelerated aging disease. <laughs> so while I was checking all the phase three type of drugs, methylene blue was one of them. The reason I picked the methylene blue was because of methylene blue has been indicated as a mitochondrial drug mm -hmm. because of it can stimulate mitochondrial function. Then we add the different type of drugs in the different concentrations in their, we call cell culture media. So mm -hmm. these are their food to feed them every day. Okay. Then we look at the skin cells by different type of cell biological analysis and the molecular analysis. And what did you find? 
What happened was we expect to see something, a beneficial effect of methylene blue on progeria skin cells. And we actually published that before the, the paper on the human skin in 2016. But the control cells also looked so nice <laughs> after being treated by methylene blue, especially in the, the cells from the aged person, like from 70 and 80, we had both female and male from advanced age. Those cells are happy one day being treated with methylene blue. So that was the trigger for me to start to think maybe methylene blue can be used as uh, active in skincare. I mean, when you say the cells were happier, I mean, we can break this down, but I'm just thinking now the products that that you've created are topical products that we put on our skin. What is the mechanism for delivery to those cells? How does it pass our skin bar barrier, which is always the, the question with every um, uh, every different type of skincare that I ask about? Yeah, How is it reaching those cells and how do we know that it's reaching them? So basically, it is a very soluble molecule. It can mm -hmm. switch forms. It can enter lipid layers. It can also enter what uh, is water soluble. So it can get into the cytosol. So that the, the it gets into the what? Sorry, I missed that there. Inside the cell, we call cytosol okay. or cytosol. So if I get too scientific, let me know. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm keeping on. But the other setup we have is we use bioprinting and the bioengineered a skin tissue, which mm -hmm. will have epidermis, dermis. it doesn't okay. have hair follicles, but it has the rest of it. Yeah. So it has different like keratinocytes, it has fibroblast, it has extracellular matrix, so it has a thick layer. Mm -hmm. Then we apply methylene blue on top, in, mm -hmm. also in the solution. And we treat this, these two set of, uh, experimental setting daily. And we wait for two weeks, three weeks. That's how experiment go. As long as we can see the mm -hmm. cells are still alive. So what did we find in the 2017? The scientific report we published. At that that time, we reported a bunch of things, expected and unexpected. Because the reason we did it, as I mentioned, was from the progeria study. So we yeah. know are some benefits after the the methylene blue treats the normal cells from healthy people so the cell proliferation is increased so the mm -hmm, cells mm -hmm. they delay the cellular senescence it's the same set of the cells they are proliferating and they live lo longer they 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 die later because our skin is constantly under uv radiation so it has a lot of reactive oxygen species in our skin we have an assay to measure the reactive oxygen species in the skin cells and what we found is after you treat with methylene blue, this level reduced significantly. And would that be described in marketing terms as reducing oxidative stress or something like that? Is that the, is that the same? It's the same. Yeah, or sometimes people say re antioxidants or they can say reduce the cellular stress because that's a huge stress to cell health well-being. Yeah. Because of the, the cells are happier, so they produce more collagen, Elastin and it also can hold water, so it improved the hydration. And we know the mitochondrial activity because the methylene blue is a mitochondrial drug. The cells has more energy to fight mm -hmm. different disease. And actually, in the end, the cells we we didn't do all the assays, but we checked the wound healing. Basically, you cut the skin tissue. And then you look at the recovery and we found that the cells treated with methylene blue, the samples, they recover much faster. What we found was very surprising to us, like all these benefits we didn't even know. Then we published that paper and which was a big disruptor to the industry. And mm -hmm. my lab was like a call. People called my lab. I didn't even have a company or anything at that moment. So what people kind just, of people were calling? People who wanted just to buy it and start using it? Or were you getting exactly. calls from dermatologists and so on saying, I want to find out more about this? Well, at that time, it was two type of people were mm -hmm. calling. One is customers. I yeah. still remember one saying, come on, I'm already 76. <laughs> I don't have time for this. I know, just develop a cream. <laughs> and the other set are like the industry or reporters. 
Well, that, listen, anything new and we're all suckered on, absolutely. Whenever we get studies like this, and this is what I've come to realise, you know, over the years of sort of exploring skincare in, in greater depth, people get very excited about these advances. And I think that sometimes their expectation, you know, I mean, I talk a lot about peptides on this channel. And, um, but I think that people's expectation sometimes outpaces um, the, the skincare itself. I mean, realistically, what do you think that people who were using uh, one of the creams every day um, could expect to see over what period of time? In our experiment, the methylene blue has the effect of delay cellular aging. So we did it for a hundred days. In, in my view, as a scientist, what methylene blue does is to delay aging but it does not do something magically like overnight and change an uh, old cell to a young. So it just yeah. made your, make your cells happier, live longer. And uh, so we all have a limited amount of stem cell, especially for our skin, but the pool of that amount is limited. And as we age, they also get aged too. So they may not be able to produce more and more cells. That's why we experience the thinning of the skin. Mm -hmm. So what medicine blue is doing is to prolong the usage of your current cells. But on the other hand, we started to see the effect relatively earlier, <laughs> even within days or within the first or second week. But the longer you use it, the better the effect you can see. And you were talking before about things like improved hydration. Anything other vis visible in the skin, do you think? When you, you, the hydration is improved and the elastic and the collagens are produced, you will see a reduce of wrinkling. So. Overall, I want to emphasize is what Messaline Blue is doing is to make your skin healthier. So mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it is also very gentle on the skin. So it's not like a retinol. So yeah, I, I have to say I use it with a retinol. Um, yeah. I use a, a retinol to hide every second day. Um, and I, I do find that they complement each other quite nicely. But likening it to retinoid is an interesting one because it's a, it's a different mechanism. Why do you think that, that they're worth comparing? Retinol is doing something very differently from Messaline Blue. So we would wanted to check. Actually, we published it side by side. We use vitamin A. Most of mm -hmm. the retinols are the derivatives of, of vitamin A. Yeah. We use vitamin A in our system and to check the what's happening if we treat with vitamin A and side by side also treat with methylene blue. So what does retinol do is to accelerate skin turnover. That's right. So what if you have some damaged cells, it will remove it and allow the new cells to be produced. And the young, the new or younger cells obviously will be able to carry more functions. They will produce more collagen, produce more elastin. So we'll give you a immediate boost of your skin experience, uh, like appearance of your skin. Mm -hmm. but on the other hand, retinol also being, I think everybody knows, can be harsh on sensitive skin mm -hmm. because you are already under the stress of running out of your your stem cells or progenitor cells, they are just working really hard to making more and more cells already, but you just keep removing the top layers and the, there is a lot of stress on those type of cells. There is a fine balance. Sometimes the damaged cells just cannot be repaired or even with adding a ton of methylene blue. I don't suggest to do so, but it just cannot be rescued. It, right now can be very helpful just to remove them and allow the new skin to grow and to take that space. But on the other hand, if you still have some gently damaged, let's say skin, and you may want to use methylene blue to, to, to recover it and to renew it and let it to grow, uh, use it for a little bit longer. It's a fine balance. Well, I'm wondering, what, what do you think that balance is? Um, I mean, what's what's your own skincare routine? Do you avoid retinoids altogether? Uh, yes. Okay. 
It was interesting because I've, yeah, I've had a lot of yes. debate around <laughs> retinoids on this channel. I've, I've found myself in hot water on one occasion for, for daring to question it. I still just don't know what how to get my head around it because we are told this is the thing. This is the thing to do for anti-aging. And I think, well, is it putting my skin under too much stress? Should I be going for another option? What's your take? I guess that's uh, the future, right? The uh, personalized skincare yeah. or personalized medicine. Everybody is different. Uh, for example, my skin, it, it has been okay. I would say it doesn't have a lot of problems. So, and I am a scientist. I'm not really in, in beauty business. So mm -hmm. I have a very simple routine and I only spend like two minutes in the, <laughs> in the morning on my skin and maybe another two minutes at night. So I use, I want things simple, straightforward and uh, that's it. So what I do is all methylene blue. At the same time, in our skincare line, Blue Link, we have not only methylene blue, we also have other active ingredients that will help those current, present skin cells to look plumpier. Like for, mm -hmm. And we have vitamin C, for example, and we mm -hmm. different, like uh, our product have different addition so to carry out the different functions. Well, who knows where we'll be in 10 years? I, of, I often wonder, in 10, 20 years time, will retinoids still be um, considered a gold standard or not? It's, it's fascinating. And as you say, maybe it's more about personalized skincare. We have our skin analyzed and we find out what we need. And that's the difficult thing for consumers at the moment is that we're not really sure what we need. And we, we sort of watch what other people are doing. We've got amazing skin and we try what they're trying and that doesn't work so well for us. And it really is a case of, of just trying different products at different frequencies as well. I wanted to ask about methylene blue as a sunscreen, which is very interesting because I have just literally been, been talking to a dermatologist about sunscreen safety on the the channel and you know the different filters and how they're being analyzed by the fda at the moment um because we know that some of the chemical filters can get into the bloodstream how does methylene blue work as um a sunscreen and can it work on its own or does it have to be used alongside another filter so we <laughs> also recently in 20 21 published a paper about methylene blue's ability as an active sunscreen ingredient in Nature Scientific Report. The punchlines of that research, the first one is because of our skin constantly under UVA mm -hmm. and the UVB exposure, UVA does not cause the damage to our DNA because it's a longer wavelength. It goes deeper into our skin tissue and the fibroblast and it increases a lot of reactive oxygen species in our skin tissue. And our methylene blue, we know it's an uh, antioxidant. It's going to recover that. And this is an area not many other sunscreen products pay attention to because FDA only measures SPF. SPF is a factor for, for skin burn, which is towards UVB, which is a much shorter wavelength, much higher energy uh, UV rays that are going to burn your skin, damage your skin. Instead of UVA, you may feel it. It's good for you sometimes, but mm -hmm. you don't want to have it too much. Yeah. And the methylene blue is functioning as an antioxidant in that mm -hmm. case to mm -hmm. neutralize some type of UVA. Number two, what we did is we compared side by side. Again, I do not speak without any research data. Mm -hmm. So side by side of oxybenzone, which is most popular, 85% of the chemical sunscreen market use oxybenzone as a key ingredient. So we added oxybenzone in one and the, the methylene blue in two, and we measured their UV absorption rate throughout uh, scanning through all the all the wavelength and what we have found is methylene blue has a similar uh, ability to absorb uv b as oxybenzone at the same concentration so depending on which one you use they are almost identical the the yeah. and the methylene blue actually has a much stronger uva absorption than oxybenzone 
in this case, we would like to suggest it has the absorption as uh, the chemical, like uh, the, the, the main character, the oxybenzone. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, as you mentioned, the toxic, uh, the, like mm -hmm. oxybenzone, there was a study which concerned me a lot. I, I think you, you mentioned you have kids, me too, and both of my kids play soccer. They've been on the field maybe throughout the year, and they always use sunscreen mm -hmm. when they're on the field. And a study found 90% of the teenager boys in their urines have oxybenzone. Ooh, right, okay. Yeah, I so mean... What we don't know is if that is harmful to them. We we that's exactly. that's the thing we've exactly. to find out, isn't it? We don't know if that's exactly. harmful or not. Yeah, so they can actually come through your body, and at least they are they are released out, but they, they <laughs> actually gets absorbed in. That's kind yeah. of concerning. But on the other hand, there are many coastal cities they ban oxybenzone usage. Why? Because they find oxybenzone can actually get, if you swim, the oxybenzone gets off from you, but they get to the coral reefs mm. in the ocean and be harmful to them. To answer that question, I want to say the reason we did the study mostly was for that. I actually had to build a coral farm to study that question. You had to what? A coral farm? You. Yeah, in my laboratory. So we okay. had actually corals side by side. Then in the little chamber, some of them treated with oxybenzone, some of them treated with methylene blue. As you probably know, methylene blue has been used as an aquarium cleaner for many years. Like you just squeeze in and your fish feels happier because of the, the aquarium is cleaner and the bacteria are killed and the the fish, it also helps the, the, the baby fish in the healing process. So we did that with the medical grade methylene blue and oxybenzone. And only in three days, the, the corals being treated with some oxybenzone just died. Methylene blue, we treated for weeks. There was nothing. And the coral, you know, it puffs, it breathes. They are very happy. So... So in that case, we know methylene blue does not harm. Yeah. Coral. And Maybe it's beneficial, but I, I do not know how to make it. <laughs> yes. So in your sunscreen, though, you have added a physical filter. Is that right? Is that just for safety sake to be 100% sure that you are screening out everything you need to screen out? Methylene blue is not accepted as a... Um, sunscreen mm -hmm. okay. active by FDA at the moment. So in order to claim a SPF, mm -hmm. we have to add some FDA approved sunscreen actives. In that case, we added a zinc oxide. So yeah. we should have been shown to be a very safe ingredient and it doesn't do much to the environment. So that's why we, we did that. Yeah, oh, that's really interesting. Now, toxicity, last question. We, we talked about that in sunscreen, how we know that um, some sunscreen filters can be absorbed into the blood. The same is probably true of methylene blue. Is that right? And what's that balance? Are you concerned about toxicity? Say we were using it all over our body in a sunscreen. Is there a potential risk there? Because of methylene blue it has been approved by FDA as a drug, so there are are a ton of toxicology like studies mm -hmm. available. We hired an independent consulting company and did a literature surveys on all the available pharmacological data of methylene blue intake orally and everything else, uh, potential like in animals, in humans. So the conclusion is the permissible, what they call daily exposure of methylene blue on top of your skin is in the range of milligrams. And what we are using is in the range of zero point something micrograms. Mm -hmm. So it's at least a hundred or 200 fold lower. If you apply all over your body, there is minimal risk. You are like a hundred fold away from like the, 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 the permissible daily exposure. So in that case, there is no risk. But I do want to say a few things about the safety. Sure. When I know people like sometimes will intake methylene blue orally as mm -hmm. a mild clearance because methylene blue being shown to be to 
in the phase two clinical trial for Alzheimer's disease, and there are other added benefit of methylene blue. So I know that there are people taking that. So while we know we have very, very little amount of methylene blue in our products, but the oral intake, I see the dosage amount is about milligrams. So do your own research and to find mm. out whether it's a good amount. Are you taking too much? Second is methylene blue is not a natural product. It's a synthetic chemical. Mm -hmm. We all know in the production, there will be some side product in chemical reactions. So the purity of methylene blue is very important. The products we have, uh, Blue Link, we use the medical grade methylene blue, which is very, very pure. But if you use the, the methylene blue you ordered from Amazon, for example, there can be something for aquarium. So do not use that because you do not know what are the other contaminants inside the product. This okay. always worries me when I see discussions on forums say, can I make my own skincare products? How much should I add? Yeah. Yeah, you can you can never be too sure. Know your source at least, know where it's sourced yeah. from and exactly, exactly what's in it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If they're making it themselves, choose the medical grade stuff. <laughs> That is really helpful. Um, I mean, I'm going to continue using it and um, I think I'm going to get myself the sunscreen now based on this conversation as well. Um, so thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. I hope you found that interview helpful. Having used Blue Lean daily for several months now, I can tell you that as with every other anti-aging product I've tried, it's not a miracle worker, it's not erased my heavier lines, but I'm enjoying using it in my skincare mix because of its protective and hydrating effects. And just having well hydrated skin can take years off the way it looks. I believe my current skincare mix is having a visible impact on my skin in terms of keeping it healthy, clear, balanced and bright and I'm the happiest with my skin right now than I have been since my youth. I just include a, a few core products in my routine of which Methylene Blue is now one and I'll note down the others in the description as well. As usual, I would love to hear from you on this. Have you tried Methylene Blue or is it something you're interested in trying? Let me know what you think. For now, thanks for watching and listening and I'll see you next time. Bye.